a foreshadowing or a figurative communication of what Christ has already done. Let us go into the rudiments and clear the air. Because some people will find it difficult to understand. And why, you know, they understand, why is it that in your church you do not do the rebranded communion? You don't take holy communion. How can a man of God say you shouldn't take communion? Is he a real man of God? How can a man of God say you cannot drink the communion wine? You cannot eat communion. Since I was born a Christian, we've been eating these things. How can he just come up from nowhere and say we cannot, we should not eat it? What kind of man of God? I even hear that in some quarters right now, there's a lot of debate going on among preachers and ministers and all kinds of things are going on. They are calling all kinds of ministers' conferences to examine, you know, my statement on the communion and all that. You know, and the first thing they have not even been able to explain is that there is no word holy communion in the Bible. So what's the debate about? A non-existing topic. There's no word in the Bible called Holy Communion. Look for it. If you find, bring it. There's none anywhere. There's none. The only thing we have in the Bible is Passover. And Passover is not bakery bread. So I don't know why pastors are gathering to discuss such subject. It looks like they don't have work. Because the first thing is to ask is, is it in the Bible? Because we don't waste time on things that are not in the scriptures. There's no such word in the entire Bible. There's no such word as, as holy communion in the Bible. Some say, but the Bible says communion of the Holy Spirit. Do you understand English at all? Do you understand English? There's a difference between communion of the Holy Spirit and holy communion. They are not the same. There's no word as holy communion in the Bible. Don't forget, I've told you there's a difference between breaking bread. Breaking bread means we're eating food. There's a difference between breaking bread Breaking bread is not the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper is not Passover. So, Holy Communion is not breaking bread. Holy Communion is not Passover. Holy Communion is not the Lord's Supper. Holy Communion is extracurricular. Because it does not even fall into any of those eatings in the scripture. Selah. That's a place to stop and think. Let's not just do things because people have been doing it. The age of a lie doesn't make it the truth. That something has been in practice doesn't mean it is right. I'm reminded of the story of a woman who used to cook food and every time she cooks sausages, she would chop off one end and chop off the other end. She would cut it and put it and, and, and you know, cut it short and put it in the pot. Her children grew up and saw her more, their mother making sausages like that. The first daughter got married and began to do it in her matrimonial home. So the, the husband one day said to her, why are you wasting? It's the same thing. Why are you chopping up the two ends? He said, that's the way my mother taught me to make it. So he said, let's go and find out from your mother why she does it. So they came to the mother. Why are you doing it like that? She said, that's the way my own mother taught me. And graciously, her own mother was alive, grandmother. So they went to grandma. Grandma, why did you teach your daughter who taught my wife how to chop up the two ends of sausages? It's a waste for us in the family. So the grandmother said, oh, when, when, when I gave birth to you people, we were so poor, we could not afford a pot that could take the length of a sausage. So since the pot couldn't take the length, whenever I'm making them, I will chop up the two ends so that it would get into the pot. That is why we were doing it. It's not because of anything else. So that ritual was transferred to the third generation without asking questions and everybody was doing it until somebody thinking right stopped and asked a question. And that was the end of that ritual. That something is being done by everybody doesn't mean it is right. You need to ask questions. That's why we're taking time to examine the text of scripture to, to see that such a thing is not even anywhere in the Bible. It's not anywhere in the Bible. It's not in the scripture. It's not in the scripture. It was symbolic. The Passover was symbolic of what Christ will do. Now Christ has done it. Christ now is our Passover. Our Passover is a person. Christ our Passover. Now, the Bible says that the New Testament is the spirit. The New Testament is not the letter. So in the New Testament, we don't deal with physical elements. The New Testament is a spiritual testament. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians, sorry, 2 Corinthians 3 verse 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse number 6. 
who also had made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the later, but of the Spirit. For the later killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. The, the, the New Testament is a Spirit Testament. It's not a testament of elements. It's not a testament of figures. It's a testament of the Spirit. That is all the things we are saying here is done in our spirit. The Passover is done in our spirit. The communications of the death, burial, and resurrection is done in our spirit. Everything is fulfilled in us. It is fulfilled in us. But people will revert back to that which is in the flesh simply because they are carnal people. Colossians chapter 2 verse 9. Let's get into something else. Colossians chapter 2 verse 9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily in Christ. Why? Because of verse 8. Look at verse 8. Verse 8. Colossians 2 verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men. After the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. And not after Christ. Listen carefully everybody. When a fulfilled law is still being taught, it has become a tradition. When a fulfilled law is be, still being taught to believers, it has become a tradition of men. That is what Paul meant by vain philosophy idle fancies it becomes plain nonsense plain nonsense vain philosophy is plain nonsense just like first fruit just like tithes practicing them as if you're under the law it becomes a tradition of men why because the law is fulfilled and because it is fulfilled it shouldn't be taught but when the fulfilled law is being taught, it becomes a tradition of man. It becomes a vain philosophy, idle fancy, or plain nonsense. The rudiments of this world are not after Christ. Usually, they can have scriptures. They can have scriptures, like I've said. So, they go after all. This is famous. This great man of God is doing it. The other man of God is doing it. The other man of God is doing it. Doesn't make it right. The, the book of Christian practice is the Bible. The Bible. It's not man, one man there. One man there. You know, it's like the man that asked me the question last night. You know, not actually asking me the question.